I think uh, an emerging, another exciting area for the application for for hemospray is the uh, is the role for uh, control of uh, you know bleeding prophylactically. So, uh, as you know, our comfort with endoresection uh, has has really uh, gone very high now. We are removing bigger things and 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 uh, mucosally, submucosally, down to the muscle, full thickness. Um, a lot of endoluminal uh, aggressive interventions are occurring. So naturally, uh, the questions come on those lines is, uh, what, how difficult and how often do you need to control bleeding in the endoresection realm? And then I'll ask a few other questions that follow from there. Rehan, you want to take that one on? Is that a big challenge? Is that, is that a low volume issue, but when it happens, it's a real challenge? Or you know, what are your thoughts on that? So th no, this so is quite a niche area. Um, and, you know, as long as people like you exist who will keep on, you know, doing crazy endoscopic resection, then, you know, all your fellows will have sleepless nights because they'll have to be thinking about how they're going to control this bleeding. So I don't think the rate of intra-procedural bleeding with endoscopic resection is, is that high because uh, certainly with submucosal dissection, it's a very controlled resection. You have visibility of your vessels. You can coagulate them and uh, you can fight fire as you go along. But once in a while, as you know, uh, certainly with mucosal resection uh, or, or EMR in the colon, if you, get a, a, if you hit a vessel, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the lumen can be really quite unforgiving and you can get a red out in no time. And it is often quite difficult to apply mechanical therapy or or coagulation graspers to an area that you can't see. And this is where something like hemospray can really get you out of jail. Um, and uh, so that's the first point. Say. And then there is this emerging paradigm now about, you know, high risk areas. So, you know, the right colon, uh, duodenal uh, endoscopic resection, where the rates of re-bleeding are not insignificant. And so... You know, Mo in his paper that I think was published earlier this year in, in UEG Journal postulated that in these patients, prophylactic application of something like hemospray may have a role in reducing those, um, uh, those delayed bleeds. Yeah, I think I think you highlighted the key points there. The the frequency of occurrence now, especially with our more sophisticated techniques of resection, uh, is not that high. But when it does occur, especially in in you know, let's say you know, in the ERCP setting with with, with sphincterotomy or with in the duodenal location, as you mentioned, and also sometimes in the esophagus. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. The bleeding can be uh, quite uh, uh, what I call lumen occluding. Um, so uh, I guess in that realm, Mo, any uh, any uh, comments on the data, how it's looking in terms of this niche area? Uh, what have you found? Uh, how effective it is? And you know, percentages wise, you know, what, yeah, what can so, you tell us? Uh, so in our most most recent manuscript, we had about seventy five patients who had a intraprocedural bleed after upper GI endoscopic therapy. Um, uh, the vast majority, so about almost 60% were endoscopic mucosal resections, uh, particularly in the esophagus. Uh, overall, hemostasis rates were 100% um, that, that were achieved intraprocedurally. And rebleed rates were very low, um, about uh, 4% in this patient cohort. And, 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 and they were all in, in endoscopic mucosal resections. Um, so, but overall, our conclusions, whether it was used in mono combination therapy, in these scenarios, um, hemospray seemed to be quite um, quite effective um, uh, in bringing about any resolution of, of bleeding. Um, whether the bleeding happened intraprocedurally, where um, you can uh, clean the hemostatic, which, which Rehan can allude to as well, you can just clean the hemostatic powder off intraprocedurally and then continue with your procedure. Um, uh, what we also found is, uh, is obviously, particularly if you've done an endoscopic mucosal resection, you've um, applied hemospray to the base, there isn't any clips, you can come back and apply other interventional therapies such as uh, RFA to a remaining Barrett section uh, without any um, uh, disruption of the area. Uh, and another thing to note is uh, in these resection bases where there's bleeding and hemosprays applied, it's been quite safe with all 75 patients. So there was 
uh, no perforations or, or no complications in this whole patient cohort. So overall, a very effective, low rebleed and very safe to use in this patient cohort based on the results. That, that's important for the audience to take away is, is that, uh, you know, with EMR or ESD, uh, as you can imagine, uh, these deeper and deeper resections, especially in thin wall structures such as the right colon, the duodenum, uh, one would intuitively think that you're, you know, remove two or three layers of the, of the, the wall and then you're going in with a spray. Uh, and clearly your experience has shown that it's safe to do that and that the risk of uh, of translocation or microperforation or pneumoperitoneum or pneumomediastinum uh, is not a is is not a risk. Not only is it not a clinically significant risk, uh, perhaps it's not even a, an issue materially.